Connecticut's present political system was shaped at the state's constitutional convention of 1965. The federal courts had ordered Connecticut to eliminate its 300-year-old system of one representative for each town and replace it with a system based on one person, one vote. Sometimes the ways democracy is increased are not so democratic. Connecticut's powerful political parties, finally forced to accept reapportionment, did everything they could to control the process. The convention leadership was hand-picked by state Republican chairman A. Cyril Pinney and state Democratic chairman John Bailey. Former Governor John Dempsey recalls. So uh, uh, Mr. Bailey and, and uh, Mr. Penny and I sat down there and we talked about it. And uh, I was not far originally. I was not far because I was scared to death that here again the people would not be representative. So we met several times and uh, we did agree and, and I insisted uh, that at least that this committee be headed up by an outstanding chairman. That was the key to me. And then I said to both Mr. Penny and Mr. Bailey, I'll give you 10 days to leave this office and go out and come back here and tell me who would represent us. Ten days later, both Mr. Penny and Mr. Bailey came back. Then I said, well, uh, who are you going to have on your Constitutional Convention? As we went through that list, I could see they had done their homework. Meet Alcorn and Ella Grasso. Mrs. Grasso became the leaders. They picked some of the best people. Not only were the leaders who were to represent the people hand-picked by the political parties, so were all the delegates and each party was guaranteed half of the delegates. The rules of the convention itself ensured tight party control. All decisions required a two-thirds majority. Since half of the delegates came from each party, this led, by all accounts, to a situation where either party's floor leader could veto any decision. The fundamental task of the convention had been defined by the courts to replace Connecticut's ancient rotten borough system with one that gave every vote approximately equal weight. It was a task fraught with emotional and historic significance. In one passionate moment, a small town delegate expressed regret at the necessity of bowing to the law of the land. When others expressed similar sentiments, former Governor Snow stood up and said it would be more appropriate to glorify the Supreme Court, which had finally wiped out more than a century of rotten borough government. This slur on small town legislators created so much acrimony that a rising vote of praise for past generations of House members had to be taken before peace could be restored. Herbert Janik is a historian who has written about the reapportionment process. The reapportionment was done by the political parties themselves. And I think that it showed that they have come a long way. Obviously, it was to the Democratic Party's advantage to reapportionment on the basis of one person, one vote. They now were the majority party in the state. The Republican Party, though, is the uh, unusual element here. You would think that they would fight and resist any sort of reapportionment. The fact that they didn't, at least in part, I think is a, a tribute to personalities. Um, a. Searle Pinney, the uh, chairman of the Republican Party, saw that Connecticut had to be brought into the 20th century in this regard. He also saw a potential appeal to the suburban voters for the new liberal Republican Party and wanted to cater to that. The Democratic and Republican Party chairman controlled the 1965 convention and tried to use the restructuring of the political system for their own ends. Ironically, however, the effect of reapportionment was a great decrease in the power of the parties and their chairman. Their goal was a political system they would continue to control, but the result of the new constitution was a far more open process than they had ever envisioned. Indeed, it marked the end of the era of great party leaders like J. Henry Rohrabach and John Bailey in Connecticut. The new Connecticut Constitution was adopted by more than two to one in a small referendum vote at the end of 1965. New districts were drawn and new elections finally held. Before reapportionment, 12% of the population could elect a majority of the state's House of Representatives. After reapportionment, it took more than 40%. As former representative, now judge, Robert Satter put it. Our state would have been entirely different but for reapportionment. Because reapportionment meant that for the first time, the Connecticut legislature was going to be reflective of the will of the people because it was going to represent the people, one for one, virtually.